Scrolling through my junk emails, I came across an offer from Groupon to attend the wake of internet funny man Dapper Laughs. Throughout my work on YouTube, I'd often reference Dapper as the antitheses of everything that I stood for, and so by extension, I felt that I owed him a visit to pay my respects. I couldn't really be bothered to put on a suit, I will say, so I just wore a black t-shirt and jeans and headed down to the train station. When I found the venue, I discovered it was being held in a gorgeous grade 2 listed building, with original windows and tasteful green ivy scaling the walls. Making my way inside, the interior was even more plush, with those little red sofas I'd only ever seen whilst exploring Lara Croft's mansion. I heard the crowd in attendance long before I saw it, but as I heaved the grand wooden doors open, I was presented with a wake, not solemn, but buzzing with life. There must have been the best part of a hundred people in that relatively small space. Champagne and nibbles were available, with waiting staff to serve them. Elaborate decorations hung from the ceiling. There was even a covers band playing contemporary hits in a 1950s style. You know the type. Do a leaper, but they make it sound like Elvis. I instantly felt rather underdressed compared to the formal attire of the other attendees, and flagged down a waiter to ask if there was any lager. A multi-pack bottle of Desperados was the response, which struck me as an odd choice, but I guess this was no ordinary event. The head of international recruitment at UCL was present, sipping on a flute of white wine. And how do you know, Mr. Laughs? She beamed with excitement. Whilst it wasn't apparent in his front-facing camera videos, it turns out that Dapper was quite the chemist, and in accordance with his will, he had agreed to fund a scholarship in his name for a low-income student to come and study chemistry in the capital. I never had the pleasure. Although, I did get 6 retweets and 13 likes criticising him for that charity single. That's good numbers for me, I joked. She scowled. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Perhaps you'd like to speak to the Earl of Alstry. He started a campaign to posthumously award Mr. Laughs the freedom of Boreham Wood. I said I hadn't eaten and left them to it. A glamour model that I recognised from some of the final issues of Zoo and Nuts magazine stood next to the canapes. Striking up a conversation, she told me that she was a regular contributor to Dapper's flagship ITV2 affair, On The Pool. Her modelling agency had gotten her the gig while she was still at university studying social care, and the reimbursement from all six episodes had allowed her to rent a studio flat close to campus. I asked her if she ever felt objectified by the nature of her role on the programme, but she strongly rejected this line of questioning. In fact, she spoke about how her boyfriend of the time, now her husband, was from Slovakia, and that the language barrier had proven difficult. She recalled how Dapper, a polyglot of nine languages, ensured he took the time in between each take to help her with the basics of Slovakian. This wasn't what I wanted to hear really, so I walked off to see if I could find someone who would align with my negative perceptions of the man. A waitress was sat on the windowsill in tears. Perhaps she had been underpaid from Dapper's estate. Nope. Tears of bereavement for the man who had given her dog CPR on South End Pier. Gutting. It was around this time, when all the children who Dapper Laughs had saved in his final moments filed in, that I made a quick exit, filtering back into the corridor. A sign posted outside another room indicated that the thin-skinned, spitting image satirist Matt Ford had also passed, and a memorial was being held. Creaking the door open, I discovered a rather plainly decorated room, a modern extension perhaps. There was a table of food, with a platter of pre-packed sandwiches. Offered, but untouched. His puppets were there. Well, some of them, anyway. Thinking about how badly I'd misjudged Daniel O'Reilly, I took a seat on one of the many available chairs. And I was glad of the peace and quiet.